When I was a little girl, I had this great little model train set and it had a dome car. And I had always wondered, you know, how long they had been around and how they came to be and where they actually went, what places they were. And now I have a chance finally, now that I'm 40 years old, to get on a dome car and actually experience it. And it is just absolutely thrilling. For over 60 years, railroad dome cars have crisscrossed North America. This story tells how dome cars created a new sensation in rail travel. A sensation that continues to delight rail passengers today. Journey with us in Dome Car Magic. The idea of a dome car came from an inspiration Cyrus R. Osborne had on July 4th of 1944. Osborne was a General Motors vice president who was riding in the cab of a diesel locomotive. He was struck by the full view of Colorado's Glenwood Canyon and wished more people could see it from this perspective. Who built and operated the first dome car? Bill Cratville provides some history. The first dome car uh, was the Silver Dome, and it was built at Aurora Shop. So they took a standard flat top coach and put a dome on it. It was Ralph Budd, president of the Burlington Railroad, who ordered his railroad to build this first dome car. It was completed in June of 1945. The Silver Dome was the first car, and its original assignment was to a train which the dome wouldn't really mean that much, and that was the Exarban Zephyr. That is the daytime train that operated from Omaha to Chicago. For years, a monument to the dome car stood on the spot in Glenwood Canyon where Osborne was struck with the dome car idea. Even before Burlington's silver dome was envisioned, Railroads were poised after World War II to innovate and improve rail passenger transportation. After all, the country was returning to a peacetime economy and had a pent-up desire for travel. Prior to the war, railroads launched either new or re-equipped trains with famous names such as Super Chief, Daylight, 20th Century Limited, Empire State Express, or Hiawatha, to name a few. But times were different, and railroads needed to explore ways of holding on to the passengers they had carried during the war. After the war, General Motors, in an effort to promote their diesel locomotives, teamed up with Pullman Standard to produce a four-car Train of Tomorrow, which toured the country in 1947 and 1948. Industrial designer Otto Cooler even proposed some dome car designs for future rail travel. The train of tomorrow was, as you know, a very unique train. It was built strictly to show off domes and EMD with its diesel locomotive and so forth. It was supposed to be the train of the future, uh, and it had all domes. Every car was domed. One of those cars, and I think it's the Moon Glow, uh, survives, and it's at Clearfield, Utah, in a storage shed. But it was a, a unique train and it finally ended its days as the city of Seattle running between Seattle and Portland on the Union Pacific. The UP bought the train. Some consider the golden age of rail passenger service to have occurred between the late 1940s and mid 1950s. During that post-war period, railroads spent millions of dollars designing and purchasing new and improved equipment. Of all this new equipment, 237 were dome cars. The dome cars were built by three manufacturers, Pullman Standard, American Car and Foundry, and the Bud Company. The number of cars manufactured by each breaks down as follows. Pullman Standard and American Car and Foundry each made 35 cars, while Bud produced 167 dome cars. However, a few railroads, such as Southern Pacific, took on the task of building their own dome cars. Mike Davis explains. The dome car that was used on the train in later years was perhaps the most spectacular dome car built in that 
you sat on this standard level and had the dome that was 13 feet above you and that was all clear space and it made for a very striking car and a beautiful lounge facility. In 1946, while the train of tomorrow was barnstorming the nation, the Chicago, Burlington and Quincy Railroad placed an order with the Bud Company for dome cars to run on their Twin Cities Zephyrs. The Twin Cities Zephyrs entered service between Chicago and Minneapolis-St. Paul in December of 1947. But this was just the beginning of the dome car explosion. More was to come with the crowning achievement of a new train that was to set the standard for viewing America at eye level.